If you have ADHD and you struggle with debilitating feelings of overwhelm, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why ADHDers are more prone to the feelings of overwhelm. Then I'm gonna give you some ADHD friendly tips to protect your energy so that you can avoid overwhelm if this is something that you struggle with. And if you're a late diagnosed ADHD woman and you struggle with feelings of overwhelm, crippling anxiety, rejection sensitivity dysphoria, emotional dysregulation, perfectionism, imposter syndrome, or motivation, and all of these things are affecting your self-esteem, your sense of self, and your self-worth, then I'm here to help. There is a link to hop on a call with me in the description of this video and it's absolutely free. I have a membership program just for ADHD women, specifically late diagnosed. And as far as I know, I'm the only person running a program like this in the entire world. So click the link after you watch this video and set up a time so that we can chat to see if I can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be. So let's begin before we get into the tips as to why ADHDers struggle with overwhelm at least more than our neurotypical counterparts. We have sensory issues, things like sound, light, too many people in a room can be really, really overwhelming. We also struggle with ADHD big feelings, also known as emotional dysregulation. And when we are dysregulated, it affects our executive functions. And what our executive functions are is really that office manager of our brain. So things like impulsivity, organization, motivation, emotional dysregulation are all part of our executive functions. And when you have ADHD, you have a deficit or a delay in your executive functioning capabilities. A lot of us struggle with perfectionism, imposter syndrome, and we struggle with transitions, which means if we are doing one thing, and then let's say we're abruptly interrupted and needing to go into a different direction to do another thing, that can cause a lot of overwhelm for us. Societal expectations, the neurotypical binary, also can affect us viscerally, where we feel the effects of overwhelm because maybe our neurotypical counterparts at work or in our personal lives are doing things much easier than we are and that causes overwhelm for us. And the final reasons that overwhelm can really affect us is having multiple roles and responsibilities as well as information overload. Now, let me know in the comments if you are aware of all of these reasons that we might fall into overwhelm and which of these reasons are affecting you currently in your life right now or have in your life. And let me know also, has it affected you more personally or professionally? Now that we've covered some of the reasons that we do get overwhelmed as ADHDers. Let's get into a couple of tips and tricks that can help you right now today on how to stop yourself from getting overwhelmed in the first place. And tip number one is to not make your brain do all the work. As I mentioned earlier, we struggle with our executive functioning, things like organization, prioritizing tasks, emotional regulation, our short-term or working memory. And a lot of us are a bit stubborn. I don't know about you, but I have been very, very stubborn in my life where I depend on my brain. I don't want to write down the thing. I want to be able to remember it. And then when I find that I have dropped the ball or maybe waited till the last minute to do something because I forgot about it, it has caused sheer overwhelm. So a tip that I have is lean into the calendars, lean into the reminders. The less your brain has to work because you're depending on systems to help you remember and to stay organized, the less chance you will feel overwhelmed. Now, number two is to break tasks down into manageable bite-sized pieces. Sometimes when we think about doing a task, it can feel like climbing a mountain. And there are a lot of steps to get from the base of a mountain to the top of a mountain. So a little bit of pre-planning on the front end can absolutely alleviate overwhelm. Number three is to limit distractions and to only do one thing at a time. If your desk is messy and cluttered and there's too many distractions, with noise or your phone pinging, it's really hard to stay focused and hyper-focus on the thing that we're doing. So removing distractions can absolutely alleviate overwhelm. And again, this comes to a little bit of pre-planning. And you know, something that a lot of ADHD people struggle with is they'll be hyper-focused on doing a task and then all of a sudden something pops into our head like, oh my gosh, I have to get milk on the way home from work. And that distraction again, can impede on our ability to stay on track. Because remember, we're not very good with transitions. So what I do to remedy this, because my brain never shuts off, 
is I keep a pad and a piece of paper beside me while I'm hyper-focused on doing a task. And that way, if an idea comes into my head or I all of a sudden remember, oh yes, I need to get milk on the way home from work today, I can just jot that down and get right back to work. I don't have that other thought in the way of what I need to get done because I have had the thought come into my head, I've written it down, and now I can move back into my task. And number four is to work into time-blocked periods as well as taking regular breaks once you've worked in that time block. I don't know about you, but I'm an absolute workaholic and I'm guilty of forgetting to take breaks, using the bathroom, getting a bite to eat. And that does add to the overwhelm, but it also increases the chances of getting into ADHD burnout. And once we're burnt out, we need to take some time to recover. So it's actually more efficient to work in a reasonable time block and to take breaks to avoid overwhelm and then the long-term effects of possibly burning out. I absolutely love the Pomodoro technique and all you need to do to use a Pomodoro technique is to get a timer, maybe a kitchen timer, set it for 25 or 30 minutes where you sit down and you focus. The really important thing with the Pomodoro technique though is once that bell goes off, you get up, you stretch, you move around, go to the bathroom, get a bite to eat, do something to give yourself that little bit of a brain break so that you don't become overwhelmed because you've been working too long and all of a sudden the information that's coming in isn't sticking and you find yourself feeling restless because you haven't gotten up and moved a little bit. ADHD brain absolutely loves movement. So using the Pomodoro technique and then taking regular breaks can absolutely alleviate overwhelm. Try it and let me know how it works out for you. And my final tip, tip number five is to ask for help. Lean on friends and family or even coworkers to body double with you if you are struggling to get a task done. And for us as ADHD people, sometimes we are so on on the ball and so good at things that we're interested in. But if we're not interested in something, it can be really, really painful. It's amazing how much more efficient and less overwhelmed we are when we just have someone beside us talking us through the task that we're doing or just sitting beside us so that we don't feel alone while we're doing it. And if a task is so completely overwhelming for you that you absolutely cannot do it, asking for help, asking for someone to do an aspect of that task for you or even hiring it out if you're in a position where you can afford that will absolutely alleviate overwhelm. We seem to be these energizer bunnies when we are really hyper-focused and really interested in something. But when something's mundane, it can be really, really hard and it can be absolutely energy draining and make us feel like we are going through crippling overwhelm. So asking for help and hiring things out when you can, can absolutely alleviate overwhelm. That's all I have for you today. Don't forget to book a call with me if if you are female late diagnosed with ADHD and you'd like to talk about my program, ADHD Mindset Mastery, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next week in the next video.